Hi everyone, welcome to another Tango Technique class at home. I hope all of you are doing very well. Today is going to be quite simple. We are going to continue with our method of combining simple movements into complex figures, interesting figures. So today we will take steps forward and backward, like this, pivots clockwise and counterclockwise, and crosses front and back, and we will combine them always in the same order. First, we will always do a step, then we will do a pivot, and then we will finish with a cross. And by changing which leg we use, left or right, or which directions we use for each one of these elements, we're going to find all kinds of possibilities with these three movements. Okay? Some of the possibilities will uh, feel familiar already, because you already use them for heroes, for engrosques, and some of them will be new and unfamiliar, but that's the advantage of being systematic, that you find everything that there is. And the things that you didn't know yet can give you new ideas for the dance floor. Yeah? So we will start with the warm-up first, and the reason why I always include the warm-up in each video, even if it's similar, is because I want to give you uh, an experience that is as close as possible to a live class with me. So, when I teach in the tango school, obviously I always start with a warm-up, so I want that you can follow along as if you were really doing a class with me, okay? Then afterwards, I am going to show you each combination in turn, and I will give you a few technical tips that are specific for each one, and then we will do them together, okay? So, let's start. Okay, warm-up. Today is going to be the usual again, so we start with feet together, Remember to place your hip straight and relax the shoulders. If you want, take a few seconds to just breathe and let the weight of your body go down to your feet. Yeah? Feel the pressure of your weight on the feet on the ground. And we start with circles with the shoulders going backwards. Yeah? Remember, don't use the elbows. Keep your arms relaxed and straight. Yeah? So we do eight. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's like a massage for the upper back. Yeah, it should feel very relaxing. Okay, now we continue with eight circles with the arms. Yeah, so remember you should keep your elbow straight all the time. You start low, then you go forward, you go up, and here you open the arms to the sides and you take the opportunity to open the chest here, to stretch the chest muscles and then go down. Okay, let's do eight. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. Okay, now we will stretch the sides of our torso. So we raise one arm until the head, the hand is above our head, and then with the hand that is on our leg, we slide down the leg until we can touch more or less the side of our knee. Yeah, and of course, then we hold this stretch for a few seconds. And then we use this hand, the hand that is up, to pull ourselves again until we are straight. And then we repeat with the other arm. Okay? So let's do four to each side. So start with one side, and then down. One, two, three, and then up. Now the other side. Slide down the leg, touch the knee. One, two, three and up. Two, go down the leg, touch the knee, hold it, one, two, three, pull yourself up to the other side, arms straight above your head, slide down your leg, touch the knee, hold it, one, two, three, up, and down. Three, arm up, go down to your knee, Enjoy the stretch and pull yourself up 
and then other side, down, touch the knee, hold it, and up. And the last time, raise the arm, lower the hand to your knee, enjoy the stretch, pull yourself up, and repeat to the other side. Raise the arm, go down, enjoy the stretch, one, two, three, and then up. Okay, now we will uh, loosen and stretch the middle. So we open the legs, we bend the knees slightly, we make a circle with our arms in front of us, and then we rotate the torso left and right. Be careful, don't move the hip. The, uh, the belt is always looking forward. Don't do this. Yeah? And we do twice eight times. Okay? So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Eight more. And one and two and three and four and five. Six and seven and eight. Okay. Now we stretch the knees and we stretch the lower back. So we will put the hands behind our head. I will show you profile. Don't forget to keep your hip placed all the time. Avoid this position. Yeah? Keep your hip straight. And then we bend the back until we are parallel with the floor and then we continue going down yeah? relax let the weight of your head pull your back down and then we bounce three times one two three and then we stretch the back again parallel with the floor and then we go up okay we will do this um, eight times okay let's do it together so get ready and go down one Parallel with the floor, bounce, one, two, three. Parallel with the floor, go up. Two, parallel to the floor, bounce, one, two, three. Parallel to the floor and go up. Three, slowly go down, bounce, one, two, three. Parallel with the floor, go up. Four, go down. Parallel with the floor, bounce, one, two, three, parallel with the floor, go up, five, go down, one, two, three, go up, and six, down, bounce, one, two, three, go up, seven, go down, bounce, one, two, three, go up, and the last one, eight, go down, bounce, one, two, three, go up, and finish, okay? Now for the next one, we will keep our legs open and the knees straight, grab your hips, and the idea here is to go back with your hip and then do circles with the hip like this. So from back you go to the side, at this point you should feel a stretch on the inside of your leg, then you go forward, then you go to the other side, you should feel a stretch on the other leg, and then back. Many people have a problem with this exercise and they start doing this. They move the head, they do the circle with the head instead of the hip. Yeah? Make sure that your head is more or less static in one position and that you are moving the hip. You see, my head is not moving too much. It's the hip, okay? So let's do eight on each direction. So, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and Eight. Now, change direction. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and 
six and seven and eight. Okay, and the last one, we close our legs, feet together. First, we bend our knees and we bounce three times, relaxed, pam, 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 one, two, three. And then we stretch the knees, we go slightly forward with our weight until the weight is on the toes. And then we push the floor down and we hold this position for three seconds on the toes, okay? Again, remember, make sure that your legs are together, that you don't have space between them. And when you are up, make sure that the big toe is the toe pressing the most on the floor. Don't allow your feet to open like this, yeah? Keep them close, okay? So let's do it. So grab your hips if you want, and then go down, bounce, one, two, three, Stretch the knees and go up. One, two, three. Go down. Two. One, two, three. Stretch knees. One, two, three. Go down. Three. One, two, three. And go up. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Go up. One, two, three. Five. One, two, three. Go up, one, two, three. Don't forget the hip, yeah? Six, one, two, three. Go up, one, two, three. And seven, one, two, three. Go up on the toes, one, two, three. Go down, and last one. One, two, three, and go up. One, two, three. Okay, and go down. Okay, so we're finished with the warm up. Let's go for the exercises. Okay, so for the first exercise, we're going to do the following. I'm going to show you from behind. Yeah, so we will start in zero position. We will do a step forward with the right leg. The right leg is going to be our leading leg. So we go forward. The step doesn't need to be very big, just a small step is okay. And then we will do a 90 degrees pivot with the right foot, like this. Then we will finish with a cross front, and then we will go back and change weight. And then we can repeat. So the structure is always the same. Step forward with right foot, 90 degrees pivot clockwise, cross front, and back step with right. Yeah? Step front, pivot, cross forward, step back, and so on. Yeah? So every time that you repeat the exercise, you are turning 90 degrees. Now, a few technical tips so that the exercise is done correctly. First, you have to start in zero position, so I recommend flex your knees, place your hip. Now, when you do the step with the right foot, your torso should at the same time turn slightly towards the direction of the pivot as a preparation. Not with the hip, of course, only with the torso. Yeah? Now, during the whole exercise, in general, try to move your feet always close to the floor, in contact with the floor. Don't lift your feet, don't do this, yeah? Don't lift your feet from the floor. Now, the next tip is that when you do the pivot, don't rush to do the cross front, yeah? Many people do the step and then they want to cross already. No. It's much better if you do the pivot keeping the back leg behind as long as you can. Look, you do the pivot and you keep the leg behind. And when the pivot is finished, then you worry about the cross. Yeah? If I show you from behind, again. So you do the step with the torso going towards the right. And then you do the pivot keeping the leg behind. And when you finish the pivot, you cross. And the last tip is that now your weight is on the foot that did the cross and now you want to go back so instead of going back directly like this before touch the inside of your standing foot yeah don't go directly back with the right foot but touch the inside yeah it's like you want to do a zero position before you go back but you don't need to do a perfect zero position it's enough that you touch briefly the inside of your standing foot. Then you change weight and then you start again. Yeah? Front, pivot, cross front and back. Okay? 
This is the first exercise. So we will do it together. First one side and then to the other side, going forward with left. Yeah? And we will do it with a metronome because I don't want music copyright strikes and because I want to improve my timing and the metronome is the best method, believe me. So I always set it in the same way, 58 BPM and 2 bits per bar because that fits very well the average track from this hardly, a slow tango. Yeah, so let's do it together. I will start with my back to you, but because we're doing 90 degrees pivots all the time, you will be able to see the exercise from every angle, okay? Because I will be turning. Okay, let's do it together. And one, and back. And two, and back. And three, and back. And four, and back. And five, and back, and six, and back, and seven, and back, and eight, and back, eight more, and one, back, two, back, three, back, four, Five, gak, six, gak, seven, gak, eight, and gak. Okay, good. Now we will do it to the other side, starting forward with the left. Okay, let's do it together 16 times. And one, and back. Two and back, three and back, four and back, five and back, six and back, seven and back, eight and back, eight more, one. Gak, two, gak, three, gak, four, gak, five, gak, six, gak, seven, gak, and eight, gak. Okay? Great! Let's go to the next exercise. Okay, for the second exercise we are going to change the cross. Instead of crossing front, we are going to cross back. So the exercise then looks like this. We start from zero position, we go front, we right, we pivot clockwise 90 degrees and then we cross back. And then we uncross and we go back and then we change weight. Yeah? So, Front with right, clockwise pivot, 90 degrees, cross behind, and cross the right foot, go back, change weight to the left, and repeat. Yeah? Now, for the technical tips, everything we said for the first exercise applies. So, use torsion when you are going to pivot on the first step, keep your feet on the floor all the time, don't lift your feet. Yeah? And here, there is a special tip for this one, because now the cross is going, to, uh, is going to be back instead of front, yeah? So, the same as before, don't rush into the cross. Instead of moving the back foot straight into the cross as you pivot, like this, many people do, try instead to do the pivot keeping the leg behind and then crossing, yeah? I'll show you from behind. You do the step, Instead of pivoting and crossing immediately, no. Do the step, pivot, keeping the leg back and then cross. And why do it like this? Well, because um, it's more beautiful. If you think about it, if you go straight into the cross, 
your back foot is going to draw a straight line on the floor. It's going to go straight onto the cross. But if you keep the foot behind as you pivot and then you cross, your foot is going to draw an arc, a part of a circle, instead of straight. And that's more beautiful. It's rounder. Yeah? Okay, so try that and let's do it together again. 16 times to each side with a metronome. So let's start with the right leg and let's do it together. And one back, two back, three back, four back. Five, back, six, back, seven, back, eight, back, eight more, one, back, two, back, three, back, four, Back, five, back, six, back, seven, back, and eight, back. Okay, good. Now let's do the same to the other side, starting going forward with the left leg. Okay, so we are ready, zero position, place your hip, bend your knees. And let's go. And one back, two back, three back, four back, five back, six back, seven back. foot 
does a straight line towards the cross. This is not uh, wrong, but we can do something a bit better, yeah? which is using the same logic from the previous exercise. Keep the back leg behind as long as you can during the pivot, like this, and then do the cross from behind. So the movement will look like this. Ah, bow. Yeah? So instead of doing a straight line with your foot, like this, boom, you will do a kind of arc that goes back and forth. Yeah? It will be like one bow. It will be round, like an S. Yeah? One more time. The foot is behind. I pivot. I keep the leg behind. That's the first part of the S. Yeah? And then here, the second part of the S. Yeah? And this gives a more interesting movement. Yeah? And then, remember the last tip. Once you have crossed, then remember to touch briefly the inside of your standing foot with the right foot before you go back. Okay? Good. So, let's uh, do it together. 16 times to each side. Okay. So, zero position. Remember, use small steps for the exercise. And we go. And one, back. Two, back. Three, back. Four, back. Five, back. Six, back. Seven, back. Eight, back. Eight more. One. Back. Two. Back. Three. Back. Four. Back. Five. Back. Six. Back. Seven. Back. Eight. Back. Okay? Good. Now let's do it to the other side by going forward with left and pivoting to our right. And one back. Two back. Three back. Four back. Change weight. So 
Here, let's see what happens with the free leg when you pivot. Yeah? So, this one is easier than the one before because, look, after the step, yeah, let's see what happens with this leg. So, when you pivot counterclockwise, the pivot will naturally bring this leg back like you did before. But now, you just have to cross back. So, it's very easy. The only thing I can tell you about this uh, is to follow the logic from the previous steps. Try to keep the leg behind as long as you can. When you pivot, don't rush into the back cross. Yeah? Allow the arc of the free foot to finish before you cross. Yeah? So that instead of a straight line like this, you have more an arc like this. Yeah? I'll show you from behind. You are here. Instead of going with this leg now straight into the cross, yeah? what you do is that you pivot, keeping the leg behind, and then you cross. Okay? That's the main tip for this one. So let's do it together 16 times again with the metronome. Okay, we start with right leg, we pivot to our left and we cross behind. And one, back, two, back, three, back, four, back, five, back. Six, back, seven, back, eight, back, eight more, one, back, two, back, three, back, four, back, five, Back six back seven back and eight back. Okay, now let's go forward with the left leg. We pivot to the right and we cross behind. Let's go and one back. Two, back, three, back, four, back, five, back, six, back, seven, back, eight, back, eight more, one, Back, two, back, three, back, four, back, five, back, six, back, seven, back, eight, back. Okay? Great. Let's go to the next exercise. Okay, so we have done all the possibilities that we could putting a pivot on the front step. Now we have to put the pivot on the back step. So for this uh, first exercise of the second half, uh, we're going to do this. Look, now I'm going to start the exercise a little bit more forward than before. Yeah? Then, the right leg is going to be our leading leg. So I go front with the right leg and then I change weight with left. And then I go back with right and here we are going to put the pivot. We are going to pivot clockwise like we did before. So we pivot this way and then we use a cross front, which is the most natural thing to do when we come from this side. And then uncross the right foot and go forward. Yeah. And this is the next repetition. So this is the structure. 
Step forward with the right leg. Change weight with left. Step back with right. 90 degree pivot. Clockwise. Cross front with left. And cross with right. Step front. Change weight. Step back. Pivot clockwise. Cross front. And then front. Yeah? Now, the technique. Let's see what happens with the free leg when we pivot. Yeah? I'm going to show you profile so that you see it better. So, you are going front and you are going back. And now you have to pivot. So, let's use the same logic that we did for the previous exercises. When you pivot now to this side, instead of trying to go with your free foot directly into the cross, doing a straight line and rushing it, no. Relax the leg, relax the leg, and pivot, keeping the leg where it is. So naturally, this leg will go front, and then you cross the pivot. This is better because the effect, like before, is that instead of drawing a straight line with your free foot like this, what you do is that you draw an arc with your free foot. Yeah? It's like a circle. It's, it's rounder and it's more beautiful. Okay? And then you cross and we go front. Okay, so that's that's the thing. So let's do it together. 16 times to each side. Huh? Okay. So get ready. Zero position. Place your hip. And we go. And one back cross. Two back cross. Three back cross. Four back cross. Five back cross. Six back cross. Seven back cross, eight, back, cross, eight more, one, back, cross, two, back, cross, three, back, cross, four, back, cross, five, back, cross, six, back, cross, seven, back, cross, eight, back, cross, okay, now let's do it to the other side, going forward with left, yeah, okay, now, one, back, cross, two, back, cross, three, Back, cross, four, back, cross, five, back, cross, six, back, cross, seven, back, cross, eight, back, cross, eight more, one, back, cross, two, back, cross, three, back, cross, four, back, cross, five, back, cross, six, back, cross, seven, back, cross, eight, back, cross. Okay? Very good. Let's go to the next exercise. Okay, for the next exercise, um, we will change our cross. So instead of crossing forward, we will cross back. So the exercise looks like this. You start from zero, then you go forward with the leading leg, which is the right one, then you change weight, and you go back. You pivot clockwise 90 degrees, and this time you cross back. And then you go front and repeat. Yeah, that's the structure. Step front with right, change weight with left, step back with right, pivot clockwise 90 degrees, cross back with left, and then go forward with right and repeat. Change weight, 
go back with right, pivot clockwise, cross back with left, and go forward with right. Yeah, that's the structure. So um, maybe you saw it already. What happens with the free leg when you pivot? We have another S again. Yeah, look, I show you from the side. Yeah, so you start from zero. You go front. You change weight, and now you go back. Now you have to pivot 90 degrees clockwise, like this. So instead of going with the free foot in a straight line towards the cross, like this, which most people do, and it's not wrong, but we can try something else now. Instead of that, you relax your free leg, and when you pivot, you let the leg go forward, which is counterintuitive. But as the leg goes forward, then you can retract the foot and cross behind. So instead of a straight line, boom, your free foot will do a kind of S. Yeah? This is the first part of the S. And then, as you finish the pivot, you do the second part of the S. So it's like, whoa, like this, yeah? One, yeah? And then remember the last tip. Now you want to go forward. So before that, you have to touch lightly, quickly, the inside of your standing foot with your right foot, with a free foot, yeah? So, bam, yeah? Typically, when you cross back and then you have to go forward, it's a bit uncontrolled. You lose your balance and you, this step is uh, forward is almost like you're falling. So if you touch the inside in this zero position, this will force you to find your balance on the back foot. And then the step forward will be very controlled and on time, yeah? Not too early. Okay? Good. So let's do the exercise together. 16 times to each side. Yeah, we start with the right leg first. Okay. And one and back cross. Two and back cross. Three and back cross. Four and back cross. Five. And back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross eight more one and back cross two and back cross three and back cross four and back cross five and back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross okay now let's do it to the other side going forward with left and one and back cross two and back cross three and back cross four and back cross five and back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross eight more one and Back cross two and back cross three and back cross four and back cross five and back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross okay good this one i agree is a little bit weird with this s yeah going front and then back so uh maybe you won't use this movement but it's good that you can do it in a technique exercise because it will give you much more awareness of what you can do with your feet yeah even if you don't use it it's always better to be able to do it than not to know it okay 
Good, so let's go to the next exercise. Okay, for the next exercise we're going to change the direction of the pivot. We have been pivoting clockwise, now we're going to pivot counterclockwise. So the exercise is going to look like this. You start in zero position, you go front with the right foot, then you change weight. Then you go back with the right foot and now you pivot 90 degrees counterclockwise, so this way. And then we will use a cross front because it's the easiest possibility in this position. And then you uncross the right foot and you start again. So the structure is always like this. Step front with right, change weight with left. Step back with right, pivot 90 degrees counterclockwise, cross front with left and cross right and forward right. Yeah, change weight, go back, pivot 90 degrees counterclockwise, cross front, and then forward, yeah? That's the structure. So, uh, as you can see, we again use the same technique for the free leg. I'm going to show you uh, on this uh, side, yeah? So, you go front, you change weight, and then you go back. Now you pivot counterclockwise, so this way. So, with the free foot, we do the following. Instead of doing a straight line, rushing the cross, like this, yeah? What we do is that we relax this leg, yeah? And then when we pivot, we let, we allow this leg to stay where it is, in front, like this. And then we cross. So instead of a straight line, yeah? The leg is going to do an arc until it closes. It's like a part of a circle. And this is always more beautiful, okay? And then we uncross. Uh, when you uncross uh, this, I think it's obvious, uh, I said it before, but I repeat it, don't lift your foot, yeah? Don't do this, especially if you do this exercise fast. Try to keep your big toe always in contact with the floor and do a small circle around your free foot, yeah? This we have worked a lot in previous classes, okay? So let's do it together 16 times. And we will start with the right leg. And one and back cross. Two and back cross. Three and back cross. Four and back cross. Five and back cross. Six and back. Cross, seven, and back, cross, eight, and back, cross, eight more, one, and back, cross, two, and back, cross, three, and back, cross, four, and back, cross, five, and back, cross, Six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross. Okay, now to the other side, starting with the left leg forward and one and back cross two and back cross three. And back cross four and back cross five and back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross eight more one and back cross two and Back cross three and back cross four and back cross five and back cross six and back cross seven and back cross eight and back cross. 
Okay, great. So, let's go for the next exercise. Okay, so for the last exercise, we're going to change our cross. Instead of crossing front, we're going to cross back. Okay, so the exercise now looks like this. You start from zero position, and you go front with the right foot, then you change weight with the left, you go back with right, and then you pivot 90 degrees counterclockwise, so this direction, and then you use a cross back, okay? And then you repeat the same structure. You go front with right, change weight with left, back with right, pivot 90 degrees counterclockwise, cross back with left, and front with right, and so on, okay? Now, let's see about the technique of the free leg. And here, this combination is special because you have two possibilities of what you can do with your free leg. Look, uh, I'll show you from the profile because it's easier to see. You go front with right, change weight, and then go back. And now you have to pivot 90 degrees in this direction. So, if you want, you could allow the momentum of the pivot to continue on the free leg and let it open to the side. Yeah? This is what the leg would naturally do if you use the momentum of the pivot. And then what happens is that you can do a lapid that naturally finishes in your back cross. So this would be one way to do it. Pivot, lapid, and then cross back. Another uh, option that you have is to do it more controlled. So uh, when you pivot, you don't allow the leg to open, but once the leg is in front, then you withdraw the foot and you move your free leg very close to the standing leg, like this. So there is no lap. From here, you do the pivot, you relax the leg, you keep it in front, and then you close it really tight around your uh, standing leg. Yeah. I am going to use the second uh, variation, yeah, the second way of doing it, because it needs a bit more control. It's not so intuitive, yeah, and it needs more control with the free leg. Okay, it's a bit more difficult than the lapid, and uh, I believe that this will give you more control. But as always, in this case, it's up to you. You can do either of them. Okay, and the last thing, don't forget. After the cross, now you are going uh, to go forward. So don't forget to touch with your free foot the inside of your standing foot before you go forward. In this case, it is especially important because when you cross back, usually you have some momentum to go forward, and very often the step forward, if you do it directly, it's very uncontrolled. Yeah, it's uh, too early and it feels a bit like you are falling, yeah, after the cross, bam, bam. So, if you do this movement, if you touch the other side of your standing foot, it forces you to find the balance on your standing leg, and then the step forward is much more controlled, more deliberate, it's a bit later, and it's better on time, yeah? So don't forget that. Okay, good. So let's do it together. 16 times to each side, yeah, with the metronome. Okay, <clears throat> so get ready, zero position, and we go forward with the right leg. And one, and back, and two, and back, and three, and back, and four, and Back and five and back and six and back and seven and back and eight and back and eight more one and back and two and back and three and back. And four and back and five and back and six and back and seven.
seven and gak and eight and gak and. Okay, good. Now 16 times going forward with the left leg. Get ready, zero position. And one and back and two and back and three and back and four and back and five and back and six and back and seven and back and eight and back and eight more one and back and two and back and three and back and four and back and five and back and six and back and seven and back and eight and back and okay very good so that was it that was the last exercise i think we covered all the possibilities if you find another one please let me know because i haven't okay and uh, of course as always i recommend you to repeat these exercises until they feel good and then challenge yourself the obvious challenge is of course to increase the tempo and try it faster and this is the advantage of working with a metronome that you can increase your tempo in small increments yeah i recommend you if you want to work on speed don't try to do it very fast too early because your technique will fall apart if you work too fast a speed that you are not used yet um, your your feet will be uh, back positions early so do it in small increments yeah so that each increment feels easy because you are already used to the previous speed and then without noticing increment by increment you will be doing it faster in a shorter time okay another thing you can do is to try these exercises with pivots of 180 degrees instead of only 90 yeah let me know in the comments if you would like me to record a video with uh, these bigger pivots, yeah? Or you find it on your own as homework, okay? So let me know. Thank you very much. I hope you like this class and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.